Crystal Dynamics builds on the success of last year's Pandemonium with Pandemonium 2. The biggest change this time around is the main female character. Probably as a result of increased babe awareness in the video game industry, think Tomb Raider's Lara Croft, Nikki has undergone a complete makeover. She's much more, well, endowed. Yes, the trend is getting obnoxious, but this is only the beginning, folks. I wonder if there's a limit to the size of those things. I guess there's no limit to the imagination. If you think we're the ones who have the imagination, then you're mistaken. The knobs in question are noticeably bigger, and it's for a reason, to entice gamers. You can only tell the relative size in two places, though, the package design and the full motion video sequences. The game itself depicts your character too small to see anything major. Pandemonium 2 is kind of fun because you only have to worry about control in one horizontal plane. The game looks like it would have 3D control, but it doesn't. And we're not complaining, because the chances are the control would have sucked if it was 3D anyway. Instead, the camera moves around the world to expose the areas as we run through them. This technique allows us to enjoy the vast spaces and wild landscapes as we play the game. You can play Pandemonium 2 with either the female character or the male counterpart. You can even switch between characters after you finish a level. Nikki, the girl, has her own set of special moves, while Fargus has another set. These moves include fireball attacks, spin attacks, and as the full motion video demonstrates, a Sid attack. Sid is the strange talking talisman that you throw at enemies to blast their butts off the screen. Pandemonium 2 requires a lot more practice and carefulness than it looks. In that respect, the game is challenging. Dedicated gamers should eventually beat it, and many players may find similarities to Crash Bandicoot 2's obstacle course-like levels. Pandemonium 2 is not the greatest game in the world, but it's decent fare with no one particular fault. It's an average game, if only due to the superiority of cousins Crash Bandicoot and Mario 64.